in the couples you've worked with, is there like the feminine and the masculine? Is there different dynamics that come into play, uh, like dominant, submissive? Is there is it like a dance where it just changes from minute to minute? Yo, is Lex there... is really diving right into the red pill. And this is what I always say. The worst person you want to go to for red pill advice when it comes to dominant submissiveness is a woman because a woman doesn't understand a man's experience. Women don't have game. No matter how educated they want to become, no matter how intellectual they are, no matter how many stats they read, all these stats will never replace real life experiences. And again, no matter how intelligent she gets, the only way she's going to be able to understand a man's experience is if she puts on a wig, she puts on a mustache, she bulks up a little bit, and she goes out and tries to pick up girls as a man. That's the only way a woman is going to be able to understand a man's shoes. Is there dynamics that you observe that both limit and enable uh, successful relationships? Yes. So there are, if we're talking about masculine, feminine, then now also are, we could get into, are we talking about actual gender, identified gender, or are we just talking about these traits? Because like I said, I stonewall, which is typically in couples, something that is more associated with straight men. Um, but that's my style of coping when I get overwhelmed. Uh, that is not tied to any sort of success or non-success of a relationship. But what we do know is that gay couples, so lesbians and gay men, why, yo, how is this relationship, how is this about men and women and then she goes to gay couples, bro? To be gentler with one another when they are having conflict discussions. I So that's actually been identified in the research and it's something I've witnessed and it's just fascinating. So with my straight couples, I'll be going through one of these, if we're processing a conflict that occurred, I'll be going through the sheet and All it's right, very- If you very didn't understand that, what she said was pretty much that in gay couples, they're more likely to put hands on each other, especially lesbians, bro. Lesbians are a lot more likely to throw hands and hit the other person physically. And a lot of women are so scared that, oh, this man is stronger than me. He's going to beat me up. He's going to be abusive the way they were back then. It's not happening. The data doesn't reflect that. It's not true. All right. Does it happen in some cases? Yes, it does, but not in most cases. In most cases, it happens in lesbian relationships. That's what the study Structured, showed. because you don't want couples doing more damage when they're there with you. You want them practicing skills that protect them from criticism, that protect them from contempt. And when I'm working with a straight couple, I am like a referee or Sometimes I'll relate it to being like a ski coach and keeping people on a bunny hill and you tell them, you let them make like two turns and then you stop them mm -hmm. and you meet up again because you don't want them to veer off. With straight couples, you are doing very short turns before you need to kind of intervene and rescaffold. I had a lesbian couple recently so and they no were so lovely with each other. They skipped like seven steps to the advanced final portion where they were already coming up with solutions and suggesting things that they might be able to do differently next time to make it better for their partner. They were asking each other questions about how their partner felt with no agenda, no attempt to sort of be like, well, do you think you're feeling that way because, which straight couples do all the time, um, you just see this humility and openness. It's lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. But I wonder if... Uh, All right, so pretty much her response is, oh, just communicate with the girl without an agenda, without trying to figure out what the problem is. Just pretty much just ask her how she feels. And that's uh, that's actually kind of true, right? Like that's kind of the empathy you need to have with women. Empathy. Right? You need to... I, 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 think, this is, I think this is like mid-advice. The best advice would be um, make her laugh, right? Because when, when she laughs, when she giggles, right, then she's changing kind of how she's feeling a little bit then once after you make her laugh then you hit her with the all right what's up what's going on right that's the best way to go about it when you're in a relationship because if you're just trying to be head forward you're trying to be so logical women don't respond to logic women respond to emotions right and 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 that's that, that has a big thing to do with men understanding game watching too many hollywood films if some of the drama some of the tension <laughs> is required for a passionate lifelong romance no it's not and that's great news ah that's cap that's cap bro you need to have a little bit of drama bro even i pick fights with my girl just for fun bro just for fun not not like serious crazy fights bro but sometimes i'll just get real serious about something that i shouldn't be serious about to be honest 
and I'll just see how she reacts. Like, like I'll just watch her calculating shit in her brain. Like, is he being serious? Is he not being serious and shit? And then I'll just take it a step further and just like really fuck with her. And like, it'll, it'll kind of mess with her brain a little bit. And then I'll just make her laugh. So you see, like I'm getting her, I'm arousing her emotions. And then I'm just like switching it back and forth like a, like a fucking toy. And then she's like, oh, I'm confused. And then she's like, okay. You know, like she just follows me. <laughs> she just follows my lead and I make her laugh and then I'll like open up. So yeah, you, you do need a little bit of drama, bro. That's how you build up the intensity. You can't just be rational and logical all the time. It's exhausting. Women don't, don't like rationality and logic. That's, that's, why, that, that's what the guy's place is for. So we actually know yes. that the closer you feel to your partner. So if, I mean, you're, you've talked a lot about beauty mm-hmm. and you can ignite that beauty, that interest, right? So when you're falling in love, it's usually that a person is sort of a mystery to you and you're uncovering these layers that you find really appealing. Mm-hmm. There are continual layers that you can uncover with your partner over time. I don't think we realize that. I think we get complacent and we think we've had every conversation imaginable. What what else are they going to do to surprise me? But we don't know the questions to be asking. One of my favorite questions, um, I like turning these conversations kind of into a quiz because I get bored easily. So rather than just asking an open-ended question, um, there's a way you can do this with your partner where it's sort of like the dating game. Like, Mm -hmm. what is my as of yet fondest but unrealized life dream? And see if your partner knows. You might not even know. Mm -hmm. They might know you better than you know yourself. That in and of itself is a beautiful reminder of the relationship and how special it is. But then also, um, when they say it, or when you realize or have to think critically, like, what is my husband's as of yet unrealized but fondest life dream, and then you can talk about it, you just, I don't know, you just kind of transcend into this. You see how she doesn't know? She's just kind of saying something to fill in the void of the conversation. What I can take from what she's saying is pretty much, I guess, you know, everybody has a goal in life. And when you're with someone, you kind of want to check each other in a sense of making sure that you're fulfilling, you're doing what you want to do in life. And at the end of the day, a, a woman's biggest goal in a life in a, in a relationship it should be to really help assist you as a man towards what you're doing because as a man you're supposed to be the one that's ambitious you're the one that's supposed to be the one that's chasing something greater than yourself to be able to provide for your family all right so how so you so she should kind of be like whatever you're doing she should kind of be like you should be checking her to make sure okay like is her is her head in the mind in, in the right place like does she want to help me does she want to do these things right and that that's that's kind of what i get from it and then i guess as a guy you know the other way around yeah you can sit here and also ask her like what she's doing what's going on in her life especially if she's not your girlfriend and you're kind of like in a dating phase right you kind of just want to be a little supportive and understand for the most part women like like arts crafts and like cooking like little things like that like they like things that are that really kind of just make them feel better. Area and you feel tight again. You feel like you feel close. Well, you really talk to each other. Like I, I've yeah. uh, I've recorded talk to each and other without people don't talk to each other. Everybody. Intending to publish uh, podcasts like this with mm-hmm. microphones with 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 friends with people close to me because it's literally that you get to ask questions like as if it's an interview, right? And we don't That's do that exactly. It. The way you're talking with me. Yeah. Sit down with your partner. Have that conversation. Like years later. Right. Show interest. Actually be curious. See see what they surprise you with. And actually what you- See, that's too too logical, bro. I'm telling you, the best way to be able to keep your relationship spicy and all that shit, bro. You should have these conversations, but have them after sex, bro, if anything. You know what I'm saying? Play with her, bro. Play with her. Have fun. Create a little drama. Create a little tension. Get her confused a little bit. These are all great ways to be able to emotionally arouse her, bro. All right, lead, lead it towards. That's that's how you build up. You got to focus on that build up. That's why. That's why I said, like in the beginning of this, a woman will never be able to understand a man's shoes. She will never be able to understand game, no matter how intellectual she is, no matter how many stats she's read. She will never be able to tell it to like a guy because a guy actually has to go through the motions. Learn 
is you don't know the answers to most of these questions. A hundred percent. Exactly. <laughs> like, like what, what's your favorite movie from the eighties? You might not know the answer to that. It's like those first date right. questions or whatever. Or what's your favorite movie this year and why? Yeah. And why? Yeah. It's yeah. He's okay. Those little conversations. Yeah. They can be had. You know what I'm saying? Those are not bad. A woman kind of likes it when you keep things simple and not too complicated. They don't like talking about finances. They like talking about little things that are very irrelevant. That's kind of what they like talking about, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It is. It's hard to do that because I think that you'll probably be offended at first, how little the other person knows. <laughs> so I think it, you have to work through that. You know, I actually find that there's this rekindling mm -hmm. because partners are shocked that their partner does know so much about them especially if they've been feeling dissatisfied or disconnected, it's a reminder of all the good that's still there. All right, maybe I can hit on the dissatisfied, disconnected part. Yeah, if you do understand your partner, you should, as a guy, you should know when your girl is not being receptive to you. All right, and that's where, yeah, you have to kind of sit back. You got to humble yourself. You got to listen to what she's going to say because what she's going to say you're not going to like. And she's going to know that, but you really have to make her feel like, okay, be open. Be open to this. And then you got to just take it, assess it, put a plan together in your brain, and then execute it. You don't have to sit here and tell it to her. You don't have to complain back to her. Just be like, yeah, I heard, I hear what you're saying. I completely understand. Uh, and I'm going to do better to improve it. Yeah, so that, that, that's my take on that. That's my take. Jesus. Jesus.